Hey again, fellow modelers, it's me, Face. Um, so if you, if you caught my last video, I was talking about my, uh, my uh, FA-18E Super Hornet. Uh, at the very end of it, I kind of teased uh, my next project, which is uh, Tamiya's new Zero, the A6M5 slash 5A Zero, um, which, uh, which will be my first World War II era aircraft in a very long time. I started, I've started a couple of them. Um, I think I did a, uh, um, a P-51, a Corsair, it had a little motorized engine, which was actually pretty cool. Um, and a, uh, an ME-262, way back in the day. I enjoyed doing them, but I never finished them, unfortunately. Um, sorry, I dropped something over here. Um, so yeah, um, now that I'm getting into aircraft, I kind of wanted to uh, try something, you know, something important, something, uh, something pretty neat, uh, and this seemed like a, a pretty, uh, a pretty good uh, option to start with. Uh, so here we'll uh, take another closer look at the box. Uh, nice big painting, uh, custom area of Tamiya kits, um, box top. Uh, has uh, one of the three different color schemes that the model can be done up as. Uh, it can also be done as two different versions, the uh, A6M5 or the A6M5A, um, which I believe uh, the differences are basically just one, one was manufactured by one company, one was manufactured by another. I'm not actually sure strictly what the, uh, the actual differences were. Uh, it also shows that it includes um, four standing figures. Um, which is a pretty nice inclusion. Uh, very nicely detailed uh, from the looks of it. Uh, the other side of the box top uh, it just has some more uh, views of the uh, um, of the aircraft for uh, for reference purposes. Uh, the instruction sheet is a let's see a five page foldout, fairly standard of Tamiya. Has uh, their bio info on the front with. Uh, uh, written in English, German, French, and Japanese from the looks of it. Uh, the inside uh, lists paint callouts, uh, all in Tamiya colors, naturally. Um, and uh, the actual assembly instructions begin with the cockpit, not surprisingly, as it seems that uh, most, most models typically start with the cockpit. Uh, which has an interesting feature uh, on this model, um, which should make it easier to uh, easier to build, in that the fuselage can actually be assembled before the cockpit is installed. Um, if you get a look at this shot right here, you can see the assembled fuselage and the uh, cockpit being inserted from underneath. I don't know if that's standard with uh, Tamiya models. Uh, of this type. I don't know if their older uh, Zero uh, kits were like that, um, but it's definitely a nice touch. Um, looks like it has lots of detail. In addition to the uh, four standing figures, it does include a seated pilot figure. Um, but uh, there's lots of other detail with uh, lots of controls and levers and switches and whatnot on the sidewalls as well as on the control panel itself. Uh, so it should be interesting to uh, detail up the cockpit. Um, not much else to say. Uh, it does have uh, separately molded flaps uh, which can be raised or lowered uh, at the builder's discretion as well as um, uh, the cowling, the engine cowling, has uh, optional uh, cowl flaps. Can be displayed as open or closed. Also, um, getting into the backside, um, not much else to show for. Uh, there's paint details for the figures and uh, stencil marking uh, details, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, there is a separate uh, instruction sheet. Uh, which includes paint instructions for the three different versions uh, that can be done uh, with this set. There is uh, um, 
this one here, which is from the Atsugi Air Base, the 302nd Naval Fighter Group, uh, which is a 5A-0 made by Nakajima. Um, there is uh, this one here, uh, which is a uh, from the 652nd Fighter Group, uh, from the Carrier Junyo, which is a uh, A6M5-0 by Nakajima. And then finally, uh, the last one is from the Rabal Fighter Group, uh, which is also an A6M5 made by Mitsubishi. So, what the differences between the three are, besides coloration and some slight uh, differences in the parts, I'm not really sure, but I'm sure I will learn. Which should be interesting. <clears throat> uh, now, the, the figures are of, to me, as usual quality, that being excellent. Um, very nicely molded, nicely cast. They even include, I don't know if you can make those out behind my finger, but those appear to be katana swords. I'm a big fan of katanas, so uh, um, that's a nice touch. But uh, it'll be tricky to paint those up and, uh, and not break them because they're so small. Like, literally, they're like 12 millimeters long. Um, but uh, lots of other detail. Uh, the figures appear to be molded typically in like four or five parts each. Um, now we're getting into the aircraft itself. Uh, here we have the wings. Um, this runner here actually shows probably the biggest difference between the two different types, the A6M5 and the A6M5A uh, aircraft, which are these panels here, uh, which fit into these slots on the wings. Um, I'm not really sure why they're different or what's different about them. It looks like maybe these two have uh, uh, additional uh, uh, like gun ports. These look like uh, shell ejection ports. So maybe it means that uh, one type has more guns than the other. I don't know. I have to do some research, uh, which should be interesting. But the detail is excellent. Uh, like I said, the flaps can be done as raised or lowered. Here's the actual flaps. Um, they're set to be done as lowered, but if you want to have them raised, you can just trim off this little tab. Uh, and they fit into uh, slots on the underside of the wing very nicely. Uh, detail, like I said, is uh, exceptional. Very nicely done panel lines. Rivet detail looks to be top-notch. Um, now, this would be, looks like cockpit and uh, interior detail, that would be the engine. Uh, the pilot figure, I think that's the control panel right here. Uh, the tail fins, uh, that might be the cockpit floor, I'm not sure. This looks like a drop tank. Uh, bulkhead, um, rudder. These look like optional parts uh, here at the, at the bottom. Maybe for, um, you know, if, if, uh, for future versions coming up, maybe one has a slightly different shaped uh, rudder. I don't know. Um, like I said, I'm not an expert when it comes to World War II era fighters, but uh, I'm learning. So, uh, otherwise, we have um, here we have the landing gear bays, which are very nicely molded on the inside. Uh, should be interesting to uh, to paint and detail up. Um, I'm not sure. That looks like it might be a tail hook. I'm not sure if these had those though. Um, what else? Uh, pilot seat, more control panels, um, antenna, other odds and ends. Neat stuff so far. And uh, finally here we have the, uh, the fuselage, uh, done in naturally in two halves. Um, quite a bit smaller than I expected. This looks like it's only about seven inches long, plus the, uh, the engine cowling, which is probably going to add about another inch. Um, they're not very big planes, you know. I mean, they're they're. I know I know World War II era aircraft are smaller than modern aircraft, but uh, these just seem like they're so much smaller than they would be. But I don't know. Uh, anyway, we have the uh, the prop here, uh, which can attach with a uh, poly cap. Um, bulkheads, from the looks of it, um, parts of the rudder. Uh, here's the cowl flap 
option. Uh, here's the closed and the open version. Also, this would be another drop tank. One of the options uh, is uh, the, the, the one that I showed you before and, uh, and this one for the two different aircraft, uh, which also attach with a polycap. Uh, another thing I noticed just a minute ago is that uh, this has two different spinners, um, which I guess uh, one is here and one is there. I guess the reason is that maybe one has a slightly shallower dome than the other one. Um, so, you know, way to go to me, way, uh, you know, great attention to detail. Um, this is the engine cowling. Uh, why they would mold it as a single piece on just this little bit of sprue, I'm not really sure. But, um, you know, maybe it's something to do with, uh, you know, the nature of the shape of it. Uh, it's just easier to do it this way, I guess. But uh, it's really nice looking, has two little gun ports on the top of it. Um, nice uh, paneling detail. It's a little thick, but uh, nevertheless, looks really, really nice. Uh, and here, finally, we have the clear parts um, with the uh, the distinctive three-part canopy. Um, I believe the actual hatch uh, can be displayed as open or closed. Uh, I'm not really sure. I will have to take a closer look. But otherwise, it includes, um, I guess these would be... Um, uh, marker lights for the wings. I think this might be a gun sight and this in the middle I have no idea. <laughs> um, finally we have a couple of poly caps. Uh, I think I said one is for the rudder, the other is for the uh, drop tank. Um, uh, last but not least uh, we have two decal sets. Uh, this one looks to have all of the stencils and common markings. Uh, it has quite a few details for the instrument panel. Um, it has uh, uh, molded, or rather, seat belts, decal labeled seat belts. Uh, markings for the interior of the cockpit. Little Japanese flags all over. I'm not sure what those are about. Uh, other markings. Very well printed. Everything looks to be in perfect register. Um, if it was in English, I'm sure I could read it if I had good enough eyesight. <laughs> uh, and finally, we have the, uh, the larger of the two decal sheets, which include uh, the different variant uh, uh, details for the, the, between the three different aircraft, the different Hinomarus and uh, leading edge stripes on the wings and tail numbers, um, plus a few other odds and ends. So yeah, there we go. Now that, uh, like I said, now that I've finished my um, my uh, Super Hornet, it'll be nice to do something a little bit different that's still a real-world aircraft. I'm looking very much forward to getting started on this, which I should do in a couple of days. Um, I want to try out some weathering techniques on this. Uh, I believe... From what I've read, Japanese fighters were notorious for uh, flaking paint, so I kind of want to try out a few techniques for replicating that on, uh, on this kit. So uh, do please stay tuned. Um, I will be posting a build-up of this, as with all my models, on eScalemodels.com. Uh, you can look for me under the name Face. Uh, I'll, have a, I'll put a link to, the, um, to that in this video as soon as I post a, a thread there. Um, Otherwise, you know, please, uh, happy building out there, and thanks for watching.